It is that time when we turn our attention to the biggest game of the day and uh, for the last two months and also of the year, considering it is the Rugby World Cup here and New Zealand versus South Africa. What a game it is going to be from 9 p.m. in uh, Stade de France to see who is going to be the fourth winner of uh, this edition of uh, the World Cup. Will it be the All Blacks or the Springboks? Uh, joining me to discuss much more of the Rugby World Cup final is a rugby administrator here in the country, Kikechi Kombo, and also sports journalist Barry Sela. Let's uh, kick off uh, the matters. Mwalimu, yeah, welcome to the Touchline, your highlight of the week. Yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, about the World Cup, and, yeah. um, um, uh, okay, there are one that uh, uh, Springboks are playing uh, good rugby and also uh, yeah, New Zealand also playing good rugby. These are all teams that have played for many, for more than 100, <coughs> I have made more than 100 times. Yes. Uh, they are meeting against at, uh, the finals <laughs> and also uh, <laughs> the Six Nation uh, champion failing to make it to the final, also the host failing, uh, failing to make it to the finals. Yes. I think uh, that's one of uh, the key areas that uh, uh, for this particular World Cup, mm -hmm. uh, it didn't go well because many expect at least that uh, one of these particular Six Nations uh, will mm -hmm. make it to the finals because Akeda are investing billions of uh, shilling in that particular yes. tournament. But unfortunately, the Southern Hemisphere still dominates the World Rugby. Well, a big one there. A barrier for you, the question will be, in 1995, how old were you? <laughs> <laughs> I was very young, but uh, yeah. uh, it tells you the history of the game, yes. and especially the two main teams that <laughs> have built the game, that is, uh, like Malimu is saying, from the Southern Hemisphere, South Africa, and, uh, and uh, New Zealand. Yes. Teams of great character, but also great rivals. So Yes. Uh, when it comes to tonight, it's 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 a one chance. Uh, I expect a, a very very good game. Yeah, if if you were to paint for us a picture of uh, the 1995 World yeah. Cup final yeah. between New Zealand and South Africa, because from what we read in history from 1995, it was also the biggest game in in, w in the world back then, and also in that uh, final. It was also South Africa coming of age yeah, sure. from apartheid and everything, yeah. and them winning the World Cup was a big one for them. Yeah. The historical meaning of this fixture, how can you paint it for the fans? Uh, actually, uh, when you look at um, the, the tournament, started in 1987. Uh, 1987, mm -hmm. uh, uh, New Zealand won. Uh, 1991, Australia won. Then uh, 1995, uh, <coughs> after the independence. After mm -hmm. having from the, the appetite, uh, I think South Africa now are admitted. But initially they were playing, but you see now they are not uh, are not allowed to play for international uh, <coughs> competition. Mm -hmm. But now it came up. Uh, Nelson Mandela was actually the was the was the simple of uh, the nation, and he, who was in the stadium. Yes. Uh, I think that was what we refers mostly when the Springbok is playing, especially in the finals or when things are tied. They say now we need the Madiba Mad Madiba magic, mm -hmm. and actually South Africa won. But see now actually the game was <laughs> based on the. On, 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 on drop calls and, um, and penalties. And like uh, nowadays when people have, the game have improved and um, uh, people, uh, they are winning, like for example, 2019 when South Africa, the VF Mapimbi who scored the first try uh, <coughs> for the for, for Springboks in the World Cup. Yes. Initially the first one was uh, was through the, the was even 1997, <coughs> sorry. It was through the, uh, the, the penalties. But um, Mapimbi scored and then Charles also called, or called the other the second try. So I think it has it changed you know, the, the the shape of uh, winning the World Cup for for the Springboks. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's a big one because you wait for these games and they don't come much often. But you look at uh, the players coming on to play this one. But before we get into the game and we uh, just have to make a prediction for you, Barry, from where you are standing and uh, how far you have watched the game so far between New Zealand and South Africa. Both of them are successful. Yeah. Three World Cup winners each, each in yeah. both sides. Yeah. How do you see the... Where do you lean on, on who can win tonight between the two? Neutral ground. <laughs> That's a very tough question, uh, but let me answer it in a clever way. The person who will utilize their line-outs yes. well. Mm. And also the kicking department. If your kickers are doing the job effectively, I think that's where the difference will be because I doubt if there'll be many tries in this tournament, in this final. Yes. They, they'll be tight. Mm -hmm. um, they'll be very tight and they'll try to crowd uh, any of the dangerous players. So um, I can't give exactly as, as Colin who will win, uh, but whoever will 
take their opportunities in the key areas of the match. Mm -hmm. We'll take it all. Well, it yeah. is a game that mm -hmm. also comes <laughs> with a lot of uh, yes. mind games yeah, yeah, coming sure. on to play with a lot of experience, yeah. coming on to play with a lot of history, coming in to play into this game. For you, yeah. <coughs> can you give a prediction on who can actually go ahead and win this one and how can they win it? Uh, the game is too close to call uh, because when you look at uh, the two teams and how strong they are and how they have established, they have played uh, together for many years. And uh, also the South African uh, new guy, the Erasmus. Yes. Uh, you see now the guy is, uh, is, is, is the guy is very uh, this guy is sharp. Uh, the guy is very smart in terms it comes to coaching and also analyzing the game. So uh, when you look at the way they have uh, they have they, they, they have, they have uh, brought up their team, look at uh, South Africa seven one split. Yes. Uh, that tells you that uh, back here they have come to destroy. And if, and if the game holds on for the first twenty minutes, uh, Springboks hold the New Zealand for the first twenty minutes. Yes. Okay. This, uh, th when you look at the tournament, the way it has gone, when you analyze the game, you see strong Springboks have been finishing strong. Especially yes. the guys who are coming in, they are very strong. Just look at the last minute. You see, mm -hmm. people had given up. Even the summit uh, in the stadium had started leaving, yes. thinking that Springboks had lost, but um, Erasmus said none, that uh, the, the last guy that he'd bring in, they'd be able to win the game for, for the Springboks, and that's how they did their duty. And when you look at 7-1 split, yes. he has seen, if uh, all, all remain constant, uh, mm -hmm. especially the backs, you see now the backs, they have quite a number of backs, they have balanced very well. Yes. Look at the New Zealand guy from Aaron Smith, number nine, uh, look at uh, Rich Moong, look at um, uh, uh, Buden Barrett, uh, 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 we have Rico, and then we also have the, the, the uh, Willie Willi Jordan. You see now, this is a very clinical guy, and look at the, uh, the also the, the backs of um, of uh, Springboks. Yes. Uh, from uh, from Fafi de Clark, when you go to Pollard, the guy who's come in and replaced uh, Libok in the finals, the guy who won the game for Springbok in 2019. Mm -hmm. You also have the Alende, the guy specialist, and even New Zealand. You see, when you look at New Zealand media, they are talking so much about the Alende, the destructive, the guy who will be able to destroy the, the, the old blacks, number 12, yes. the Alende. And then you go to another guy, Jesse Creel, who's played seven, uh, who's played sevens. I think yeah. uh, Nyingera knows him so well. You know, they was playing together. Yeah. They also have uh, the other guy, seven, who will come in. Uh, 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 sorry, this guy, Smith. Mm -hmm. You see now, Quagga Smith, he'll come in. He's a super seven player. Mm -hmm. He's fast, he's versatile. He can be able to use an utility player. He's a back utility, also, um, uh, he's also a, before, an, uh, a forward utility. Yes. So he can be able also to, to, to support the, the team. Then now, Chelsea Colby and uh, Kurt Riarenze. Those are yeah. very destructive. And when you look at the last game they played at Twickenham, <coughs> Springboks, the, the, the last build up match, yes. uh, where Springboks won 35 7. You see, these are the key players, the Chelsea, uh, Colby and, um, and, and Kuti Arenze, mm -hmm. and then also have the, 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 the Allende, but by then Pollard was not there. So this, yes. this, is, an, this is another addition that's brought in uh, to the team. And this guy has got that experience. When you look at the backs of, uh, the backs of, uh, of, of uh, or Springboks, yes. they are very experienced players. The, the question is uh, usually is, uh, uh, where it was actually very controversial when... Uh, South Africa named their bench and did that 7-1 split. Yeah. The first time they did it was in a test match, yeah, and sure. it was actually against New Zealand. New Zealand yeah. They won, yeah. and now they are coming back. They tried it against uh, Ireland, Ireland yeah, yeah. in the pool matches. You saw the controversy yeah. that it brought out in that one, and now they, are, they have actually managed to name it for this final. W what is the controversy? W what does this 7 1 split mean <laughs> that these uh, other teams yeah. do not want that? Because most uh, of the yeah. rugby pundits, and former players, and everybody are saying yeah. that the yeah. 7 1 split yeah. is destroying rugby. rugby yeah. But from the African perspective, yeah. from South African perspective, yeah. it is about innovation yeah, sure. of uh, their tactics and how they are going to play the game. Yeah. Yeah. So, what does it mean, yeah. the 7 1 split, yeah. and what does it mean for the game? No, okay, it means well for the game because these are the rules. And you see now what South Africa is, is uh, South Africa is winning, looking at it, how do you win the game? Let us also look at the other areas that coaches have not utilized. So these particular coaches of South Africa, Jack Nib and uh, Erasmus, they want yes. to be ahead of the other coaches and they want to put spring box in the, in the right. They have molded spring box. You see now their target was they were to bring the team, a strong team in 2019. Yes. Then they come and win the World Cup in 2027. But you see now the f their formula worked so fast that they won the World Cup in 2019. Uh -huh. And now this particular team have grown together. They have just brought in a few guys yes. uh, who like uh, the, the Kuta Renze who have been brought into the team and the Quagga Smith and the Dion Fori. Actually, like they 10 <coughs> who played in 2019 19, have yeah. been named in the lineup the, in the, starting. The right in starting lineup, yeah. yeah. So these are very experienced type and these coaches have been looking at where, 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 where uh, the other coaches are not utilizing. Like when you look at uh, what happened uh, with the, the mark, you see the mark, teams are used to kick, then the other teams again, uh, they attack. 
Yes. But see now they are calling the guy come for for the scrum down. So they are wondering which type mm -hmm. of rugby is this. Yes. Even the commentators they are wondering <laughs> now yes. this is a new way of uh, <laughs> playing rugby. And these guys what they have done, they have done, they have they have, uh, they, have they have gone out and they have no, no, analyzed the game and said now we need to win the, the scrum. Once we win the scrum, we'll be able to get the ball and attack. Yes. And they can attack from their 22 because what <laughs> teams fear making a mistake in 22 probably a penalty. And but mm -hmm. see now these guys they have specialized in their in, the, in, the, in their scrums. Yes. They'll be able to win the scrum. Then they'll be able to attack and they'll be able to score. Yeah. Or if, if not, you see now, they'll be able to, uh, to, to push the scrum, they'll be able to secure a penalty from the scrum, and then they'll go for a line-up, they'll, they'll get a mall. You see, like, mm -hmm. what, what happened in England? Yes. You see now, uh, 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 what Nani Willie Rory said, he told mm -hmm. the guys we are coming here for what? Uh, for scrum down. For scrum and down. they won the scrum, they got a penalty, Paula took it to, the, uh, to 22, yes. they had a scrum, uh -huh, yes. then Dion Fori, it mm -hmm. started to a scrum. That was mm -hmm. the last seven minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the box were, people are saying people have been knocked out. Mm -hmm. But see now, the guys who come in, they are smart and they are winning from from the scrum so yeah. seven seven one is about the the breakdowns yes. they are very critical terms in the breakdowns they are winning the breakdowns mm -hmm. they, are, they are securing their breakdowns and they keep on attacking and circulating the ball they are break, you see now they are using it to to break the the, 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 the attack line yes. and that's what it's all about the rugby and that's the way of the, how the springboks is winning this particular game so if uh, new zealand uh, i think they are, they are master they're also going to scrum well uh, mm -hmm. for this but uh, if, if, if they, they'll be able to, to win their scrums, uh, well, fine. But see now, Springbok are going to bring it out so they secure their breakdown also to have the, they break the attack line. Once yes. they break the attack line, it's okay. They'll be able to, 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 to hold the New Zealand and they'll be able to, to win the game. Well, it is a game that everyone is waiting for and uh, going to watch. And we've got to talk about also players who are coming on to this team. One player who has been a key figure for South Africa has got to be their captain, Sia Kolisi. You were, who was there in 2019 and is back also this time round. Barry, when you look at Sia Kolesi, away from the game itself, mm. his leadership qualities that yeah. he brings to the team, mm. it makes you admire the guy and that is someone you will need in your lineup when you are going out against the All Blacks. Exactly, true. I've watched him since uh, 2019 and when you see him four years down the line, he still maintains the calm demeanor. Yeah. Even under pressure, he can still talk to the guys. He's very calm, collected, and a natural born leader. Even during, um, even w study him when he's doing interviews, even yes. uh, post or pre interviews. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, first of all, very intelligent how he answers the questions, how he interacts with his team, how he interacts with his, with his coaches. He, 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 the top down approach where he gets the message is clear from the top mm -hmm. to his team. So I think having Sia is a, an advantage, even sometimes when he's not playing much or even sometimes when he's maybe unfit or injured. Yes. Uh, you can feel uh, you can feel the presence of Sia Kolisi. So yes. I think uh, the box are very lucky to have him. And um, we, we expect he wants to make history as the first captain to go back to back. Yes. Uh, so all eyes will be on Sia and how he, you know, talks to the boys. Well... Sia Kolesi is yeah. a good one for <coughs> South Africa and will be coming. But an, uh, one winger from uh, the New Zealand side is Willie Jordan, yeah. Yeah. who is a very really electrifying winner and <laughs> can really play mm -hmm. very well. Yeah. How can South Africa play against such a player and some of the good players that uh, New Zealand will bring onto the table against South Africa? Yeah, well, what, what New Zealand will do will not allow those guys to play. They will mm -hmm. rush on the defense, they will yeah. not allow them to pass the ball. But if uh, they make the mistake that uh, Ireland made and uh, also Argentina made to allow these guys to attack the ball and circulate the ball, mm -hmm. those guys are very destructive. Uh, yeah. When you come to Willie Jordan, uh, Beauty Barrel, and uh, uh, the, uh, so the, the other center, uh, uh, these, these are very clinical guys and the way they attack mm -hmm. and also with the support of uh, Smith and uh, Rich Mohung. Rich Mohung is one of the best um, uh, scrummer, sorry, player of now in the world. Mm -hmm. So if allow these guys to play the game, it's, uh, it's going to be very, very tough for them. But what they're also supposed to be, probably what New Zealand will see, will see what try to work for England, and also the weather is chaotic. Uh, that's, in, uh, that, that's the biggest problem now in Paris. You see yes. now it's raining and mm -hmm. uh, it's also windy. You mm -hmm. see now that's also distracting the, the game plan for South Africa. South Africa, most of their players, they, they are playing in uh, dry conditions. Mm -hmm. yes. But see now that kind of weather and really affected. And you saw even what uh, the coach said about the weather. You see now winning in such a weather is very difficult. But they came out. And I think that's why this guy also now brought in. You see now when you look at the bench, these are guys who are playing in Europe. 
Yes. Look at Kylian is playing for Musta in Ireland. We have also Braden Yakande who is playing for RC in, uh, in, in France. We have uh, uh, Dion Fauri who has also played in Europe for long, though he's now playing for Thomas in South Africa. So R.G. Seaman is also coming, he's playing for Musta. So they are playing in this particular kind of weather. Even Pollard now, he was brought in the 30th minute uh, during the, the last game. Because now they are looking at uh, Libok. Libok is playing for Stomach in South Africa, dry condition most of the year. Mm -hmm. But you see, Pollard is in such a condition most of the year. He's played in France, he's played in, uh, he's played now, he's playing for Leicester in, uh, in England. Mm -hmm. So they brought him back and I find he stabilized the, the backs and also mm -hmm. getting the balls and the, down to the ball handling was okay. Mm -hmm. But I uh, see now, like, uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, Arenze, who is playing for for, for Bulls in, uh, in 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 uh, in in in, in Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. yeah. See now, it's also it was got also troubled with the, the ball. But see now, the training that has happened uh, for the last one week, they're training such a condition. So I hope they'll be able to stabilize. But uh, when it comes to the weather condition, if they allow these guys for New Zealand to attack and they are playing in wet condition, I think it will be destructive for for South Africa. But I know Arenze, mm -hmm. the way they have trained and uh, some of the clips, yes. I think they 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 are, they, are more, they were trying to work out on the attack and so these teams have played together they know each other very well yes mm -hmm. yeah and also uh, Erasmus is always ahead of the other coaches you see mm -hmm. now it come up with new things and guys get confused mm -hmm. uh, the way he's playing it brings up the seven uh, seven one split so New Zealand now they are saying how do you play this game now you're bringing about a six two uh, six two mm -hmm. look yes. at their backs who are so the the second team that's going to come mm -hmm. uh, quite a number of uh, guys are young they are, don't have the experience like the South Africans who are coming for second half uh -huh. and South Africa been finishing strong mm -hmm. so New Zealand might work to see that they want to finish the game in the yes. first half. But if uh, South Africa will be able to hold them in the first half, yes. then I think it will be chaotic for, for Eddie in the second half. Well, it is the touchline here on Y254. We are hanging out with Mwalimu Kikechi Kombo and Barry Seal. And it's all about uh, the Rugby World Cup final that is happening at a Stade de France in France, actually at 9 p.m. Kenyan time. You can be able to watch that match. We talk about the significance of this game, the history that it has had and everything. But we have got to talk about also the tactics that come on to that game and everything. And we've got to talk about the two squads that South Africa usually brings on to the game. Yeah. That is the bomb squad and now the nuke squad. Yeah. <laughs> now, the significance of the bomb squad in such a game, yeah. how good will it be? Uh, well, now it, uh, it will depend, but see now, uh, when, when the, the good thing with, uh, yeah, with uh, Erasmus, he analyzes the game, mm -hmm. and you find you are not giving out 100%, he just gets you out of uh, the pitch, and then he brings another guy. You mm -hmm. see, like what happened, he brought in uh, Pollard in the f uh, 50 minutes. People are expecting Edsbet to finish the game because yes. Fossa is one of the big guys in South Africa. Mm -hmm. He's been nominated for uh, world, world, player, world Rugby Player of the Year. Yes. But see now, Erasmus, so he was giving 80%, then he brought in R.G. Simon. And Sinman went on to, to win the, the to, to have the winning try. Uh, to, uh, you, you conf uh, he went on to contribute to the winning try. Yes. So uh, the bomb squad will be able to come in to strengthen the, the team and also to, be de to destroy the to destroy the, the forwards of uh, New of uh, New Zealand. Mm -hmm. I think they'll be able to come in to come for, to 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 get some of the penalties. Pollard is there. He's accurate kicker. He'll be able to convert all the penalties. So uh, also to stabilize the game and have the breakdowns, the set pieces. They'll be able to secure them. The yes. line out. And uh, line out the malls, so these guys will be there, and that's why the essence of uh, the bomb squad because they are strong, they are, they are experienced players, yes. and they are all round. So mm -hmm. I think that's where New Zealand was a bit worried uh, when the bomb squad will be able to come in the second half, and I think that's where people are really waiting <laughs> what the bomb yeah. squad will be able to do today. Yes, yeah, and then now the nuke squad now, <laughs> that now that's the one yeah, that yeah. comes for the 7 1 split, yeah, 7 1 split, yes. Well, yeah. it's a big game there and everyone is waiting to see how it is going to pan out between these two sides. The history, the games, the player head-to-head, -head, it's all coming down to the final from 9 p.m. And it is going on between these two teams in France. But uh, the question I can put out to you is, uh, these are the two highest ranked teams uh, in the world at the moment, yeah. New Zealand, South Africa. Mm. How can the other teams catch up to them? Because it, it looks like it's not easy yeah. to catch up to the way New Zealand has prepared and how they play and also the spring books. Yeah, first of all, there's a reason why these two, two are both three World Cup winners and they are meeting in, in the final. It's not even a surprise anymore. Yeah. So for me, the the other teams um they just have to study the structures the culture 
Because there's something about the rugby in these two countries. It's, it's, it's just yes. that it's beyond the game. So the structures, the investment, yes. it's just told you how the, the other team has like 15 grounds for training. Yes. So Europe has the money. Huh. Europe has the money. Yeah. But now, uh, beyond the money, what can you do in a strategic way mm. to have the Frances, the Irelands, the Englands, you know, mm. get to that next level? Yes. Um, I think that is the only missing bit. If, if you can get the right structure, the right player development plant, um, what we talk about in this sides of the world, yes. I think then these other guys in the next World Cup, they can try uh, and, 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 and catch up. Mm. Um, Ireland can be in, in that, sen in that uh, conversation, Wales, mm. England. Um, just put in the hours, put in the money, and, and you'll see results. England, uh, South Africa, and New Zealand, yes. have, it's almost a century of, of history in rugby. Yeah, yeah. yeah actually, so I was looking at it, and it's 102 year history. Yes, look mm. at that. With, it's I think, 107 test matches. Yeah. yeah. And uh, New Zealand has yeah, not yeah. won a test match uh, in South Africa yeah. since 1966. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it tells you. Um, <laughs> the exact thing that <laughs> people need to do. But yeah. I still think the yeah. these two are yeah. still a, a bit of a, a yard, a gap yes. yeah. with the rest of the pack. Yeah. Uh, how, how, can, how can we catch up? Because uh, <laughs> overall, when you look at uh, the World Cup and you saw teams have really improved. Yeah. Yeah. You look at uh, Uruguay came and they really played very well. Yeah. Argentina, yeah. Uh, away even from the rugby itself, they believe yeah. that Argentina had mm -hmm. to play you look at even the last stages of the game they still had a belief that we can go against England they made it on to the semi-finals yeah. and they have actually really improved yeah. mm -hmm. in their rugby how can the other teams actually get on to that level I think that, that, that's been the complaint uh, uh, that teams have been uh, uh, putting to the world rugby and that's why World Rugby has come up with a, a different league uh, that's in 2026 uh -huh, uh, the yes. Nations League and uh, yeah. where we'll be having tier 1, tier 2 and tier 3 league mm -hmm. and we'll be having promotion to those particular though some, some nations are opposed to that because yes. they want to they have already invested in, the, in, the, in their they league they want to maintain their status quo and mm -hmm. that's why they have also improved the, they have also increased the number of teams to 24 now in 2020-27 the yeah. game in Australia when Australia will be hosting there will be 24 teams uh, mm -hmm. will be playing at the, that particular World Cup. Uh, but the way my friend here says is about uh, the investment. Uh, put the in right investment, put the, have the right infrastructure, mm -hmm. and also uh, have the right play in the right leagues. Mm -hmm. You see now, like the South Africa, when they were kicked out of uh, the Super Rugby, yes. yeah, within the few months, they're already in the, in, the, in the Northern Hemisphere. They are playing in the URC uh, Champions, uh, the URC League. Yes. You see, and they're also now in the European League. And uh, it's just within a matter of time, you'll be able to see the South African teams, they'll be meeting in the final in URC, and they'll also be meeting the final in the European uh, Champions League. Yes. Uh, so, uh, sorry, Euro European League. So, uh, Henken, so uh, pro, uh, they changed the name from the European League to Henken, Henken, Henken Cup. The sponsor. Yeah, because yeah. now these particular teams are in, the, in, the, in Africa, and mm -hmm. probably two of them will be meeting in the final. Probably Bulls and Stormers will meet in the final. Yes. So, how do you call it a European League? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, now they change it to Henken Champions, uh, Champion, Champ Champions League, yeah. uh, Champions Cup. So, uh, what happens now here is uh, about the investment. What what are you putting in the investment? Are you playing in the right league? Look where Argentina is. Yes. Argentina, when you see now, they, they wrote an article recently and they were tagging South Africa for where they are. They have made it to the semi-final. <coughs> and uh, making the semi-final is through the contribution of South Africa. They allowed them to play in their league and they were not charging anything. They yes. hosted them and uh, they improved their, their league. So they play in the Curry Cup and that's where they are. Because they, at home, they, they, they could not be able to, 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 to improve on their own, to be able to compete on their own. Yes. But see now, their players have now grown, and some of them, they are playing in the, in the European League. So we need to have players playing in the, in the big leagues, uh, playing with the, with the world-class players, mm -hmm. so that now when you come back, you form that particular team. You see now, they are played, and they are used to playing with the world-class players. So we'll be yes. able to, to go and compete uh, properly. But there's a lot of issue of investment, and the issue of club rugby should also move out from the issue of playing uh, club rugby here in and out. We should yes. have the franchise like what happened in South Africa. Look at this particular team, players who are playing in the World Cup. They all play in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the franchise league. Yes. Look at uh, what's New Zealand today. They, mm -hmm. they, 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 those particular players, the they are coming from Bulls, which is a franchise. They are coming from uh, Highlanders. They are coming from the Crusaders. Mm -hmm. uh, they are also coming from the, the, from the, the Chiefs. So yes. these, these are coming from, look at South Africa. These mm -hmm. players are coming from where? They are coming from Bulls, Thomas. Uh, they're also coming from uh, cheetahs. Uh, cheetahs yeah. yeah. So you see now, these are particular players who are only coming from from the league, the Sharks, from the which yeah. is based in Durban. Mm -hmm. 
So what we're supposed to do, we have the franchise league. Then this franchise league can also be able now to monitor and manage that particular region. For example, we can say the Western region, let us have all the clubs. How many clubs are in Western region? We have uh, 20 clubs. Can we increase the clubs to 100 clubs? So these particular clubs supply these particular players to one team. Uh, that's the franchise team. So these, particular, now they, these are particular players now who are selected to the national team. Look at um, South Africa. They have a 20-year-old guy in the World Cup, um, yes. Canon Moody. Mm -hmm. So this Canon Moody is already played for the clubs. He's moved to the franchise team. He's now playing for Bulls and he's at uh, the World Cup. So this particular guy, you see now South Africa is already safe for the next few. 15 years for the yes. next uh, three World Cup. This guy is going to play. He's played in 2023. He's going to play in 2027 World Cup, 2031 World Cup, yeah. and also play between 2034 World Cup. Yes. So that's how they are built. So these guys are already ready for the World Cup of 2034. Yes. But where the other teams, they are not ready for 2034 World Cup. Yeah. So we need to have that blueprint already mm. being there. Look mm. at uh, what happened in Blue Bulls recently. This the Blue Bulls had a tournament of under 16. Yeah. 2,500 kids playing turn rugby, up. yeah, turn yeah. up for that particular <laughs> tournament. Yeah. So that's just one region, one mm -hmm. province in, uh, in, 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 in Gauteng. Yeah. So also in, uh, in, 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 in Brisbane, we had uh, 2,500 kids playing in that particular tournament. Yeah. So these particular teams are already ahead of of, uh, of, of the others. Yeah. So the others also wants to come up with this kind of structures mm -hmm. and then they implement those structures and that's how they'll be able to match. And well, now what rugby is always doing something would bring about the that is particularly go and win and yes. get promoted to uh, the other and have more test matches, invest yeah. in those test matches. Mm -hmm. I think we'll be able to play well and uh, also these particular clubs will be able to see. And when, when, when you send a team to play in this particular league, you yes. register. Well, do, to, so the first thing is uh, when South Africa was saying, we are going to Europe, but it's quite expensive. Yes. In fact, they are, we shall we manage, but they say no. When to end is expensive, yes. but after some time we'll be able to get the returns. Yes. So probably now and then this year and next year they'll start getting the returns, yeah, they're applying the returns back, mm -hmm. which is okay. So you can spend a lot of money, you enter in that particular league, but at the end of the day you'll see the returns and the returns mm -hmm. is your players mm -hmm. now also playing for the national team and winning and you're okay. Finally for you, all blacks or uh, spring books? I go with spring books. Africa. Africa, <laughs> my key is. <laughs> uh, it's too close to call, but uh, yes, the essence of uh, the bomb squad, yeah. I feel South Africa has an advantage because they have been winning under pressure, yes. and this pressure is too much for mm -hmm. the Springboks, and uh, I feel the Springboks uh, will carry the day. Well, and they'll be one of, uh, they'll, they'll make the record as uh, the yes. top uh, country, yeah. making it uh, four times, four and times. also the second team back to back. New Zealand made it in 2011, they won 2011, 2015, yes. and Springboks now will be the second one making history, but also the second team to win back to back 2019 2023 yeah. thank you well two teams that have actually dominated uh, the world of rugby from 2011 you have had it is been new zealand 2015 new zealand and now 2019 it was south africa who will it be in 2023 between the all blacks and the springboks the game is 9 p.m kenyan time at the Stade de france between uh, New Zealand and South Africa. Thanks a lot, Barry Silla and Mwalimu Kikechi Kombo. Let's enjoy some of the highlights of European football and everything when it comes to Champions League, Europa League and the English Premier League. When we come back, it will be all about the fan zone. Monday night football in North London. And yes, it's getting colder.